In this video, let's break down some of the factors that affect a real estate market in terms of value of the homes, how quickly they're selling, so you can kind of understand what these factors are and why you can then use them to predict kind of where the housing market's going, and this will make better decisions as a real estate investor. So what affects the housing market? Well, first, when you look at the geography, so let's just say you're up in an airplane flying in the sky and you look down below out your window, you're going to see all this land spread out across many miles and you're going to notice different clusters of houses and neighborhoods. And then you're going to notice open land that's farm fields. You're going to see city districts that are all buildings and businesses. And then you're going to see other districts like golf courses, lakes that have houses on them. So when you think about real estate, it's a collection of homes across an entire city. But each city then can be broken down into different sections, different zip codes, different townships. So every area in your local market is going to be affected differently based on different factors. Now, when it comes to the grand scheme of things, kind of the general summary of the market, you can mainly look at things like employment. If your town has lots of people employed, making money, they can then turn around and afford housing. And that's gonna help them then buy houses and housing prices are gonna go up. So you wanna keep an eye on economic factors, like what's the current employment rate? You know, as you notice people getting laid off, this might start to affect the real estate market because people don't necessarily have money anymore to buy the homes or afford the homes. And this can cause things like foreclosures and it can just take away some of that buyer demand, which then causes housing prices to not go up as much anymore. So think about the employment rate, watch your local economy for how people are being employed, laid off, what the trends at currently. You also want to look at the current supply of homes on the market. This impacts the big thing with price. If the homes on the market are really low, lots of buyers are competing for limited amounts of homes on the market. And this causes bidding wars. This causes people to compete with each other. And this helps push prices higher, but it also makes it hard as an investor because you can't buy these investment properties as easily because you're getting into wars with other investors, other home buyers who are all competing over the same properties. So if it's a good time to invest, you might wait until your market starts to show an increase in inventory and that, stop, that will help soften the market so that you don't have as competitive of a market to compete in. Now, the other thing that affects home prices and your market is the demand. When home prices start to go up, it's because there's just so much demand that outweighs supply. We just talked about the supply side, but the demand side, again, can be influenced by things like the employment rate. So lots of people have good jobs, they're making more money, then they go out and start looking for homes to buy. They wanna stop renting, they wanna become homeowners. So in this case, demand's gonna be largely fueled, again, by how the economy's doing. Other things that fuel demand, interest rates. When people see mortgage rates drop, like they were for several years, they kept dropping, 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 we got down as low as two and a half percent for mortgage rates. This caused big demands and people going into the market looking to apply for mortgages, refinances, to make sure they could secure these low interest rate loans. And this helped boost the housing prices higher because we had lots of people trying to buy homes while mortgage rates were cheap. Now as home prices have started to go up, and mortgage rates have started to go up, this is making housing affordability much tougher. And this is starting to cause demand from buyers to decrease. So as the demand starts to drop, this will stop prices from going as high as quickly. So this will help soften the market a little bit. So if you're a real estate investor, you wanna keep an eye on these trends because if you're owning properties that you're thinking of selling, like rental properties, or you're doing the fix and flip strategy, and you notice that home prices are starting to slow down and not go up much anymore, it might start to be time to shift strategy and maybe hold off on flipping houses in case of price drops, where you get stuck in a property that you you overpaid for and you can't sell it for as high as you thought you could and you end up not making money on the deal. So again, keeping an eye on inventory levels, 
buyer demand levels based on economic factors like employment rates and interest rates of loans. These are going to be some key indicators that kind of tell you the health of your real estate market to help you make decisions if it's a good time to get started buying flips, buying rental properties, if it's a good time to sell any properties you currently have. So you can play both sides. You can see if it's a good time for a buyer or if it's a good time to be a seller to try to time the market if you're in it for the short term. If you're in it for the long term, you're just keeping an eye on these factors more for general knowledge so that you can make long term decisions such as when should I raise rents? How much should I raise rents? You don't want to get caught trying to raise rent when all of a sudden the rental market's dropping and that's going to leave your property sitting vacant for a while so you can't find a tenant because the tenants are flooding to the cheaper properties on the market. So you want to also on the landlord side keep track of these different trends so that you can make smart decisions on how to rent out your properties and keep them occupied so you can keep income coming into your bank account. As you notice employment starting to drop you might notice that it's harder for tenants to keep their jobs and they might lose their jobs, which means they might stop paying rent payments every month. So this could affect your finances. If you've got bills you got to pay every month for this property and income stops coming in from your tenant, you need to have a strategy in place to make sure you're protected to still pay those bills until your tenant can continue paying you or until you change tenants by evicting them and getting a new tenant in that can afford the property and make payments on time. So with that being said, those are some different things to think about that affect property values in your local market. Think about the overall economy, what it's doing. Think about the housing market in terms of buy, demand, and uh, seller supply so that you can make sure you're keeping tabs when home prices are going up and factors that might cause home prices to start going down.